Yeah, you know what I'm talking about? And uh, so I was a new and as a Christian, and so I wanted to go to, I wanted to do whatever the church, whatever the church wanted to do. And so when the doors were open, I was there. It was a work day, if it was passing out groceries to people, if it was whatever uh, the doors were, whatever the church was doing, I wanted to do. I wanted to be involved in it. And so I found out that there was an intercessory prayer meeting at church on, I think it was Monday or Tuesday nights, I can't really remember. And so I wanted to go to this meeting because I wanted to learn how to pray because I figured if anybody knew how to pray, it was the people that were intercessors, right? So I get to this meeting and I was the uh, youngest person there. I was, prob I was 19 or 20 at the time. And the other four people in the room had to be about 90 to 100 years old. <laughs> and these little old ladies were in this room, and it was just a small room. It was probably like my office size, maybe even smaller than that. And the lights were down low, dim, and you could hardly make out their faces. And they were in there just yelling and praying and crying out to God for uh, different people, for the pastor, for their family, for uh, lost people. We were near a Marine Corps base, so they were praying for the Marines on the base to get saved. And they were just screaming and dancing and speaking in tongues and just doing all sorts of crazy stuff. And I just sat there like, and, and I didn't want to. I was in the room, so I didn't. I didn't like want to open up the door, and leave. So I just sat there for about two hours, listening to them, going, "Wow." They and I thought, well, you know, my th first thought was, "Wow, they must really love God to be do this. They you know, do it this way, or they must uh, really have concern for people that are not saved or whatever." I mean, it's just a really compassion. That was my first experience as as an intercessor. Um, and, and an accessory. Then I read in Romans, and if you would open your Bibles to the book of Romans. In verse 34, 834. Chapter. Uh, chapter 8, verse 34. And it really, let me read the whole thing. I'm going to go back up to verse 28. If you have a, in your Bibles, some of my, and some Bibles I have like, more than conquerors, you ever read that? It says, we are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. Let me read that whole section, and then I'll get to the point at verse 34. It says, and then I'll pray before I get started here. It says, and we know that we are all, in all things, God works for good. For those who love him and are called according to his purpose. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the likeness of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. And those who he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. Who did God call? Uh, everybody. Okay. Amen? God called everybody. We're all predestined to be his uh, brother and sister in Christ. And he says if you're gonna, he called us, he's going to justify us. And if he justifies us, he's going to glorify us. Can you say amen? Amen. You don't think of yourself being glorified, but God wants you to be glorified. Hallelujah. That's just a freebie. Verse 31. What then shall we say in response to this? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will, we, will he not also uh, alone with him graciously give us all things? Verse 33. Who will bring all any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who is he that condemns? Christ Jesus, who died more than that, who was raised from to life, is the right is at the right hand of God and is interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sores? As written, for your sake we face death all day long. We consider as sheep to slaughter, and go on to, the, go on to the rest of it. Let me finish it, verse 37. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loves us. Who loves us? Jesus. And God the Father loves us. For I am convinced, this is what we should say to ourselves, for I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor neither angels, nor demons, 
neither the present nor the future, nor any power, neither height nor depth, or anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Father, we love you this morning. And Lord, we thank you that we are overcomers of all things through Jesus Christ. And Lord, we thank you that Jesus is interceding for us. Those that are called, those that are justified, those that are being glorified, we are called to according to your purposes. And God, that you love us because you sent your Son to die on our behalf. So that all our sins will be forgiven and that your love will be glorified in our lives. So Father, we recognize this morning that nothing, nothing can separate us from your love. And I thank you for that in Jesus' name. And everyone said amen. Amen. So intercession is the title of what we're going to be talking about today. Intercession is the act of being, bringing two sides together. So intercession is the act of bringing two things together. Let me say that again, because I always misunderstood this. I always thought intercession was just praying out loud for people's soul for God. Interceding for somebody. Praying for them. But it's not really that act. What intercession is, is we're bringing heaven to earth. We're inter if you look at think about it this way, it's an intersection. Two intersections. A highway, there's an intersection, and two lanes meet together at that point. What Jesus did by interceding for us, he provided a way for us to be connected to God. He performed the act of interceding for us on the cross. So now we can come to God freely. Amen? Amen. How about if we can come to God without guilt in our life? Yes. How many feel guilty sometimes? You're depressed. Things happen. You don't, know, you, don't, you, 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 like, you don't want to come to God because there's something wrong in your life and you're separated from Him. But Jesus is sitting at the right hand of mine reminding God that He paid the price for you and me, that we can now come to him and be together with God. Because God loved, God loved us so much that he wanted us to be together with him from the beginning of time. He interceded for us, amen? So here we see that Jesus interceded for us. He, his purpose is to bring together, now think about this, bring together heaven. What's happening in heaven right now? We know there's angels standing before the throne of God and crying out, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. The people that passed on before us are up there praising and worshiping Him and encouraging us. Come on, hurry up. Don't give up. Keep the faith. Amen? Because when we die, when we pass from this life to the next, they're going to be the ones we see first. Amen? They're going to be greeting us when we make it to happen. Amen? And so we know God wants us to be there. And so Jesus provided that way for us. So on earth, we can experience that love and joy and peace. Amen? Because nothing, what does it say in Romans 8 here? Nothing can separate us from the love of God. I was thinking, uh, what if I don't believe in God? What if I don't believe that He exists, but His love is still there for us? Can you say amen? Amen. Yes? Because it is. It's just there for us. Because God provided for us. No matter what human beings think or whatever they've been taught, God's love is still there for us. It's amazing. I just, matter of fact, one of the, uh, this passage of scripture in my other Bible is all wore out because I, when I preached or taught or if I was on the street witnessing to people or went door to door, whatever I did, I was, when I was first a Christian in North Carolina, I would go door to door with this older gentleman, and, and this is what I tell people. This, I, this verse, chapter 8, is what I read to him over and over again. It's like the only thing I knew. I didn't know anything about the Bible except for this. God loves you, and his love was continually, uh, is continually given towards you no matter what. Amen? And so the Holy Spirit, let me talk, let's go to Romans chapter 8, and go to verse 26 again. 26 and 27. Right back up before I read that, it says, in my Bible, it's underlined. Can you see? It's underlined in my Bible. Um, in the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. How many need help in weakness? Amen. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit Himself intercedes for us with groans and words that cannot be expressed. And He searches our heart, knows our mind, knows the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints in accordance to God's will. So we don't know what to pray sometimes. We don't know how to connect with God. But the Holy Spirit is there to help.
help encourage us to connect with God. So what? So we can have the peace and love and joy and all those things that he wants to give us in our life. I don't know what to pray right now. Matter of fact, I'm just mad at God because of the stuff that's going on in my life. Anybody like that? Come on. You're just mad about it. You can't figure it out. Life is tough. Amen? And now I have to, I'm trying to be a Christian, whatever that means in my, my thinking, so I know I just, I'm walking and I'm striving, trying to do the right thing, and I, I just fail sometimes. Can you say amen? amen? God brings us by His Spirit, brings us to that intersection so we can be with God. Amen? So our sins can be forgiven, that we can have guilt no more, that we can walk in joy and peace. And ha How many just want to be happy? You're just tired of being mad and, you know, life is just tough. I want to just be happy. And I love, I, I think I said this last week, that one of the fruits of the Spirit is joy. God, would you just pour joy over the sanctuary right now, God? Would you just fill everybody here with some happiness? Amen? Would you just receive that from God right now? Would you just kind of put a smile, just make a fake smile if you could, just, just put a fake smile on you. There you go. See, just put a smile on your face and just receive some joy from God because we can't, we don't get it, we can't get it by ourselves. The world cannot give us this joy. We need it from the God through His Holy Spirit to give joy in us because no matter what life throws at us, we can be happy. We can be happy. Come on. Don't shut me down when I'm preaching good. We can be happy. And I said, well, I'm not happy because this, and, and we, have our, we have our list, right? How many got a list of all the junk that's going on in our lives? Right? We got a list. It's, man, I, I take this list and I cannot find any joy in this list. But when I read the Word of God, it says the Spirit of God prays for us, brings us into an interesting for us, meaning He brings us to a point of knowing Jesus a little deeper, to understand the love of the Father, because He intercedes, He's intersecting us with God. And you know, come on, how many, if you're even in this room today, you know, it, you always come to those points in the road where you either got to accept the love of God or you kind of reject it. And no, I'm just going to be mad. I'm just going to have a pity party today. Come on. You know what I'm talking about because I do the same thing. I don't want to be happy at this moment. I'm just going to be mad. And the Spirit of God is saying to you, come on. You don't know what to pray, you don't know how to pray, you don't know how to deal with this situation, but I'm going to bring you right here to this intersection where you're going to meet Jesus one more time. I'm going to bring you to this place where you're going to meet the Father again and understand His love. And then you have a choice. You're going to go down that road with Him, or you're going to go down the other road. It's your choice. It, it happens all the time. Is this real or not? Come on, we, we have to, God wants to, to intersect, want to be with them. He wants us to have, understand his love and his forgiveness. Hallelujah. And then we come to a point where we begin to pray. Not only for our, we get past praying for ourselves, and then we begin to pray for other people. Just like Jesus is doing. Jesus is not really praying for himself or interceding or connecting us with, with the Father's love. He wants us to do the same thing. He wants us to intersect with other people or bring them to a love of the Father. Amen? Our friends, our loved ones, right? People that we know. Because our real purpose, because remember we pray according to God's will, right? His purpose. And I think I shared this many times, that the very purpose of God, our Heavenly Father, our Dad, is to bring all creation, all living human beings, every nation, every people group, to Him. Amen? And I said, well, I know I have a part in that. I, I don't know what to do, but I know I have a part in that. Amen? There's something that God wants you to do and wants me to do. The minimum I think that we can do is to intercede or help people come to that moment and intersect with God. And it happens initially in prayer. Now the work has already been done. Now think about it. The work has been done. All we have to do is bring a person to that place where they can intersect with God. 
But because they, that, that's not like a southern god, God. That's not almost mm-hmm. holy, is it? <laughs> I scared myself there. <laughs> so, intersects with our Heavenly Father. Amen. I used to be like this a lot, you know, now I get this kind of snuck up, it just snuck in there. Oh, God. I'm going to get the microphone closer so it's not louder, too. God. Maybe I should carry the microphone out in the streets with me. God. And then maybe just come down. I'm intersecting you with God. I'm bringing. But the work has already been done. Amen. Jesus did it on the cross. So all we're doing is bringing a person to a point where they can make that decision. Amen. And our prayers, let's say, we don't know what to pray for somebody. How do I pray for somebody? Sometimes we don't want to pray. Lord, touch so and so. Help them to come to know you as their savior. Um, then sometimes they just run out of words, you know. I don't know what to pray. And then the Spirit of God comes, says, "Well, pray this. Pray that their mind won't be deceived and their heart will be open to God." Oh, I didn't think of that. Pray that the deception that they've been living in will come to light and they'll see the difference. Amen. And then I pray that. And it's like, wow, so I'm not praying things that I wouldn't, in my own mind, think, I don't, I don't know what else to pray. Lord, save them. Amen. And then, you know, I'm done. But now sometimes it's hours in prayer. Sometimes I spend, you know, time, a lot of time in prayer. I don't, and it's not measured by time. Don't get me wrong. And it's just like reading our, how many's reading their, uh, through their Bible? The little Bible chart? How many's got this? One, anybody? No? Two? Okay, three of us, all right, very good. Anyway, so if you don't have one of these, get one of these, all right? But and oh, so I've been doing is just reading this with the um, uh, with the uh, online Bible. I just turn it on, right? And I read, I follow along the words, and I get to understand some of those, or get to say some of those words that I wouldn't normally say. Uh, that I just skip over in the Bible. I don't want to say them. The Hittites and Amorites, all those types and people's names that I just don't know how to pronounce. But you know, it's really good to read along. But what's really cool about this? is that the more I'm doing this more consistently now, because it's like every day, it's like I have that information of the Word in my spirit now. Amen? And it seems like when I pray, I'm praying a different prayer. I'm praying what Moses prayed for the people of, uh, as they came out of Egypt. I'm praying um, when he prayed and left that he went into Goshen, or when they, before he went to Goshen, and when he came out of Goshen, and he went across into the, the Red Sea. And, and when the uh, revelation came to me the other day, when I was reading, um, there's this big fire, a pillar of uh, fire at night, and this big cloud during the day, and they covered the Israelites. And they just had, all they had to do was follow the, the cloud and wherever the pillar was. They, they, they would just go to these different parts of the desert. But then the uh, Egyptians got mad again, right? Pharaoh and all his army, the best of his army, came after the children of Israel, Israelite, right? And what God did, he took those, that pillar of cloud and that pillar of fire and placed it between the army of Egypt and them. And I was thinking about, you know how you just read, sometimes God just does that, the Holy Spirit just kind of shows you something. I'm thinking, you know, between your problems and where you are, God has a pillar of fire. God has a cloud that protects you. I thought, oh my goodness. That he, means he's always there. There's always ready to come on our defense and protect us from whatever the enemy has against us. Amen? Come on. That's so cool. You know, that's in the word. So when I pray now, I say, God, would you put a fire and a, and a pillar of fire and a pillar of uh, a cloud uh, 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 in that person's life so that the enemy won't get to them. Amen? And I pray that for you guys too. I didn't pray that before. I just prayed because now when I, read, I was going through the word of God and that's just a fresh thing that the Holy Spirit put in my heart. Amen? So what am I doing? I'm praying the, a prayer that you would intersect in a point that you come to a point with God that if the enemy comes in, you say, no, I, I'm with God. He's on my side. You, you, you situation, you problem, whatever you're dealing, you have to flee because the water of the river is going to fall on you and you're going to die and drown. Amen? Can you say amen? amen. God, you. God always is bringing, his word is alive and real and it, it ministers to every part of our lives if we just let it. Interceding is bringing whoever your children, your wife, your husband, uh, the lost, people you learn and know about, people in this church, amen? We're bringing them in an encounter with God on a, every, on a daily basis, amen? I want you to encounter God. And God wants to be encountered with you and what he wants to do for you. This is so beautiful. I don't know if I can even explain it properly. Maybe if I look at it as 
uh, we went through a few weddings. I had five kids at uh, four weddings, you know, and that moment when the bride and the bridegroom look at each other before they say, I do. They know it's coming. There's an anticipation there. But in the love that just shines in their eyes, amen, they look at each other and you know this is real, amen? They love each other. Just like when you and Randy got married. Huh? I remember that right standing right here, right? I mean, that moment, there's just a great, that, that moment, and you, you know, you can watch, go on YouTube and watch weddings, it's always there, you know, it's kind of fun watching those silly things, but it, there's a moment when the bride looks at the bridegroom and like, are you going to say I do? But she knows he's going to say I do. She knows that he's going to say yes, and he knows that she's going to say yes. And God knows you're going to say yes too to him, amen? He knows it. And that love, that moment that you intersect, that moment that they're together, God's doing that to us on a constant basis. He's looking at you with love intently to say, come, I love you, and I'll protect you, and I'll take care of you, Amen. and I'll fight your battles for you. I'm there for you. Amen? Yeah. And our responsibility seems with this. Interceding for people is not hard, because the work of it has already been done. Amen? The work has been done. So you say, well, what do I have to do? It's like going to the grocery store, and the groceries are already paid for. All you have to do is collect them. That's pretty cool, huh? Okay. Or maybe if you go into the computer store, and you want a computer, it's already paid for. Whatever you want to put there. But God already paid the price for you and for me. Amen. And he wants you to know that he loves you. Amen? Look, let's turn to 1 Timothy and I'm going to read this to you. This is a pretty cool uh, passage uh, uh, section. Um, now, Timothy, uh, Paul wrote to Timothy, 1 Timothy 2.1. And this is, this is um, let me set this up a little bit. Paul is writing to Timothy as, let's say, a young minister, just starting off. He's, he's just learning the trade, if you will. He's learning how to be a minister. He's learning how to love. And Paul's writing his letters of instruction. So sometimes it's really good for you guys that are called to do more work than just come to Sunday morning services to go and read this, all right? Because there's, there's a little bit of, um, there's an obligation, if you will. There's some duty, if you will, that um, God has placed in us to help us to be a stronger believer, amen? And um, this, this is Paul penning these things, and I'm gonna read it to you now. It says, verse two, verse one, uh, chapter two, verse one, it says, I urge, what I urge, I, you know, I'm telling you, you need to do this. I urge you then, first of all, that, uh, that requests, prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving be made for everyone. So he's telling Paul, uh, Timothy how to pray. Right? Pray for everyone. Don't just pray for your dad and mom and pray for your brother. Pray for everyone. Now, he gives a reason for this. That's why I love the word of God. It always explains itself. And look at verse 2. It says, For the kings and for all those in authority, that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all goodness and holiness. I love teaching this to kids because I said, if you pray for your mom and dad, you, you, you get there be some peace in the house. Amen? <laughs> but he wasn't really saying that. But I mean, this is the thing that you can pray for your mom and dad, and then you would have some peace. Pray. How about how many here have a job? Right. Or, or how many? I know you guys go to school. Go to school. How many have teachers? Right. You go to school. You have teachers. You have professors. Right. How do you? How do you have good favor with them? Pray for them. Thank God for them. Pray for them. You might not know what their needs are, but it's God who you know they have needs. And God, I pray that you provide for them, provide for their family. What's going to happen in your heart for, towards them? For the people in authority over you, your boss. What if you had a really cranky boss? Does anybody ever have a really cranky boss? I had a couple in my day. And um, I remember uh, Captain Tedeschi. Captain Tedeschi was the most crankiest guy I worked for. He would smoke a big cigar every day, right? And he was just grumpy all the time. And I would pray for him. And because the Word of God says pray for him. I read this early in my Christian walk. And I said, okay, I'm going to pray for those in authority over me. Okay, so I'm praying for him, right? 
And it was so cool to watch over a period of time him change, not towards everybody, but towards me. Amen? Because he's still the grumpy guy, right? But every, then when he needed something, it seemed like he just would change. He would like talk to me. And he asked me to do things. And I thought, in my heart, I would I'd just smile at him, but I knew, in my heart, I just knew that God was touching him. Amen? And I was hoping that, of course, I was hoping that he would come to know Jesus as Lord and Savior. I don't know if he ever did, but I hope he did. Amen? And so I just look at this verse and say, if we intercede, if we pray for those that are in authority over us, and who would that be? How about our government officials? Yeah. How many don't like what's going on in the country? Yeah. How many complain about it? <laughs> well, I'm going to tell you the truth. Just shut up about that. Yeah. Right? That's why I don't respond on Facebook to all that junk that goes on. I don't want to get involved in that. Because if, as a believer, and some of my Christian friends, they have some nasty things to say about our government, about what's going on in our state. You know, and I don't, you know, I don't, even, I don't even respond to that. Because the Word of God says right here that I'm supposed to pray for those that are authority over me. Wow. You can all repent right now if you want to. It's fine. Ask God to forgive you. Because it's so much easier to complain than it is to pray. It's so much easier to complain about the situation or get with a group of people that are complaining. Because, right, if, you don't, if you're not a complainer, really, and you get around a bunch of people that start complaining, you just kind of fall into that, right? How does that happen? You know that old saying, a bad apple spoils a whole bunch? You ever hear that? You put a bad apple in a barrel, that's what the, it's really old, but in a basket with other good apples, the bad apple spoils the other ones. I don't know how it does it, just the, the other ones start to deteriorate. Right? You put a good apple in a bad bunch of apples, what happens? The apple gets bad. It, turns, it, it, it disintegrates. The same thing with us. So when you start communicating things in a negative light about our government, about people in authority over you, about your bosses, right? Everybody likes to complain about the boss around the water cooler, right? Not getting paid enough, what you got to raise, you know, have to work all these hours, whatever, whatever. We say it all the time. And then also we get caught up in it. And then the word, and the word, we're actually, can I say it? Can I tell you the truth? Can I tell you as a pastor? Can I just tell you the truth about that? Uh, everybody look at me and smile first, okay? All right. It's sinning. It's sinning. It's we're sinning. We're cutting down people. Remember we, in the word of God, it says that life and death comes from our tongue. Right? So we can speak life into people, or we can condemn them. And we're not, it's not our place to condemn people. It's not our responsibility. It's God. God has judgment, and he'll do it righteously, and he'll do all the right things, because he's God. But we, man, we can rip some people bad, and then just go on in our life and praise God. Right? So how can, this is one part, one, one example, how can good water and bad water come out of the same faucet? How can cursing and blessing come out of the same vessel? It can't. Well, it should, maybe. Maybe I should, maybe I should say it should. Amen? Come on, smile at me again. I know you're, you love me, right? Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, Jesus, help me. Verse 3 says, This is good and pleases God our Savior, who wants all men to be saved and to come into a knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator, Jesus, between God and man, the man Jesus Christ. Amen? Isn't it interesting how Paul writes here, the man Jesus Christ? Because sometimes we like Jesus as, as God, and he is God, but he also became a human being, and he died and sacrificed for us all. So here it says, he's the mediator now. He's the one sitting at the right hand of the Father, reminding us and reminding God that we're supposed to come together for us, for us to have salvation. So when we intercede with people, for people, we're bringing them to a saving knowledge of Jesus. Amen? Yeah. Hallelujah. Then Isaiah 59, 16 says, there is no one to intercede. Isaiah was crying out to God. There's no one to intercede. Who's going to intercede for those people? Who's going to intercede for the children of Israel? Who's going to intercede, if you will, for the people in your life? Uh, you know what? 
And sometimes I get overwhelmed with thinking how big and how wide the love of God is and how much he wants to reach so many people for, the, for God. And I'm going to challenge you like I did in, in the beginning of January. Don't look at the, the big scope of things. Would you just affect the people around you? Would you intercede, begin to intercede? Like you guys are moving to a new house. I mean, intercede for your new, your neighbors. They, you know, they need to know Jesus. Maybe they do know Jesus. That'd be great that you have a brother and sister in Christ there. But if you don't know them, begin to intercede for them. Begin to, God, show me what I need to do to bring them to a closer relationship with you. Maybe it is taking a pie over there and saying hi to them and just connecting with them, right? Because the whole goal of that is to bring them to the same knowledge of Jesus. This spring and this summer, we're gonna, uh, we're scheduling. I'm talking with the board. We're gonna schedule barbecues throughout the city at people's houses. I was talking to Angel about his apartment complex. We could invite everybody in the building to a barbecue. Man, it'd be a lot of people. We have a lot of food, right? And then we want to tell them about Jesus. All we want to do is tell them we, we care about them, you know? And the next time we see them, hey, you were the guy who hosted the, bar the barbecue. Why'd you do that? Well, see, I'm a believer. And I'm a, I believe that God wants everybody to know him. And I just want to help you get to know him. Oh, that's pretty cool. And then they go on. And you never know what can happen. That's, that's our mission. That's what we're supposed to do, is we're going to intercede for people. Who's going to intercede? Who's going to bring people to a place where they can intersect with God? And then they have to make the decision, right? We don't have to, I mean, our job is to bring them and let God take care of them, right? Uh, I remember young, a while back, we was talking about making fishers of men, right? You know, and said, we're going to catch them and let God clean them, right? So as Christians, we don't have to condemn people the way they live, the way they act, the way they dress, the way they do things. It is not our responsibility. As believers, our responsibility, come on, saints, is to love them just like the Father loves them. Amen. Amen. And so my prayer is that God help me to love people like you love them. So I can bring them to you. So I can intercede for them. So I can bring them into a right relationship with you, God. Amen. And let God worry about all the things that's in their lives that they're hurting, they're, they're, they're having troubles, or whatever it is. All we can say is God can help you. That's what the believers are supposed to do today. Amen? Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. So what would a prayer of intercession look like? If we're going to pray to pray uh, uh, to intercede for somebody. What would that look like? First of all, I thank God for the salvation that he provided for all people. Right? I don't know how you start your prayer time, but I always start my prayer time with just thanking God. And sometimes I go through a list. It's like, um, I'll go through, I thank God for my family. I can always do my wife first, and then my kids, and then my grandkids, and I go through that whole process first. Just because that's, you know, I, 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 like I feel I should pray for them. That's my responsibility as a, a grandpa, right? Pray for my children. And then I pray for the church members, right? I pray for everybody that's here, everybody that attends here. I just pray for them. Thank God for them. I don't really pray for their needs at this point. I just thank them. Thank God that Astrid's here and she comes and you know all those things and, and the guys that help with the, and the board and all the things that they do and their families and I just pray for them, right? Thank God for them. And then I begin to pray for the different needs that God by His Spirit brings up. I, I saw because I have a lot of needs and I, I know every you guys have a lot of needs and I just don't know what to pray sometimes. So I just wait. And I'm not in the rush to pray. And maybe that's because I'm a pastor and I have time during the week to do that. So I just kind of wait on God. And I just ask God, okay, well, how should I pray for Ashley? You know, what, what does she need? You know, and I just, I just pray whatever the Holy Spirit tells me to pray. Because when I don't know what to pray, they, we just read that. The Spirit helps us pray, right? And sometimes it's just moaning and groaning. I don't know what to pray. God, just touch them. <laughs> Strengthen them. Help them. And then, um, and then at the end, I always wind up just praising God. And I'm, I'm glad nothing, you know, it's never recorded, but I just kind of sing and walk around the sanctuary. And anyway, I just... Uh, sit at the piano, try to play, it doesn't happen. Um, you know, but I just, I just worship God and thank Him because I know that I just want to, personally, I just want to feel His presence. And then maybe during some time in that time, I'll pray for my own needs. Like last. You know, it's like, I, I just, it's not really, because my desire is just to know Him more and more. And so when I'm reading the Word of God, I, wanna, I want Him to show me in the Word who He is. And then when I'm praying, I just want to feel His presence. Like we sang that song, I feel His heartbeat, right? I want to, I don't know. God wants to be that close to you, that you can hear His breath. Is that okay? He breathed into man the very breath of life. God, I want I want all that. I want whatever God has for, for me, but I, 
I want to be able to give it to you guys. Amen? Praise the Lord. So intercession is simply this, that we're bringing heaven and earth together through our prayers for other people. We're in helping them intersect, a person intersect with God so they can have a relationship with Him. Amen? Praise the Lord. Let's stand together. And I want to pray over you. Uh, I was reminded, Tina had reminded me yesterday, we're kind of studying, and uh, we have seen so many cool stuff happen since we've been in Mass, and just because we pray for people. And, um, and the Lord reminded me if there, that we should pray for the needs of the people before you guys leave. And I want to do that for you. I want to pray for your particular needs. If you don't mind, if you don't mind sharing them. But I, I don't want to take a long time. But I do want to pray for, for your needs. And, and, um, and, and just ask God to touch you. Just, could you just go around the room? If you have a need, would you just raise your hand? I want to ask you. If you, just, if you would verbally speak it out, it would be great. Do you have anything?